two, one. Okay, it's uh, seven fourteen. I'll call the order this meeting to order the Middlebury Development Review Board for August eighth, two thousand sixteen. Um, the first thing I'll do is go over the three items on the business agenda. The first ap application is by Robert Foster of Vermont Natural Ag Products for conditional use approval and <coughs> commercial forestry operations and biomass processing as a use at the existing composting facility located at 279 Lower Foot Street in the BRC Zoning District. The second item is an application by Barbara Nelson of Middlebury Studio, Studio School for a setback waiver to construct an approximately 30 by 35 foot addition within the 125 foot front setback of, from Route 7. This property is located at 2377 Route 7 South in the AR Zoning District. The third application is by Middlebury Natural Food Cooperative Incorporated for a conditional use approval for proposed changes to their existing building, including an addition and associated modifications to the parking, access, and landscaping. This property is located at 1 through 9 Washington Street in the VRC zone. Okay. Um, I'd like to remind everyone this hearing will be conducted in an orderly manner consistent with our rules of procedure. Um, Jen will now say something about interested parties. Sure. Only statutorily defined interested persons can make an appeal of a decision of a zoning officer or DRB. Um, only those interested persons who have participated in the DRB proceeding may appeal the decision being entered during this proceeding in environmental court. Um, so if there's a, an appeal of the decision that came out of this hearing, we need to establish who participated tonight. And so to that end, um, if everyone could sign the sign-in sheet that came around before the meeting um, with your name and address, then I'll be able to document that you were here. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you, Jen. Yep. Um, first item on the uh, agenda is public communications for any item not on the agenda. Hearing none. Um, next item is the approval of minutes of March 14th, 2016, um, and I think we can approve those tonight. Is there a motion? I move we approve them. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any changes, comments, questions? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, approval of minutes of 725, 2016. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, changes, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? I don't think so. No. Uh, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. I'm not okay. Um, first item of bit on the business agenda, um, the application by Robert Foster of Vermont Natural Ag Foods. Um, at this time, for anybody wishing to provide information or questions, I will give the oath. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. It is. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. I was wondering how this was going to work. <laughs> okay. Okay. Give us a summary of what your plans are. Sure. We were approached, uh, oh, probably a couple months ago now by a another group that was looking to provide processed chips for energy, biomass. We already bring in and grind product to go with our composting, so it seemed like a natural. So what it would involve is actually a uh, hoop structure. I think you've got a 
site plan there. It would be located on the property and at this point we're looking at probably it wouldn't take effect until next year. We haven't worked out any of the details, but knowing how long permits sort of take, mm -hmm. uh, we thought we'd come here and get started on that process. Uh, we may have to go through a minor Act 250, I'm not sure. That's kind of up in the air at this point, but this was the first step. So basically, it would be bringing in round wood, processing it on site, storing it, and then making deliveries, which could be four, four loads a day, something like that. It, it varies. Mm -hmm. It depends on what their market is. So I wanted to get ahead of the curve on this one if we could. I'd be happy to entertain any any questions. Uh, it will not be visible from the road, will it, Bob? No, it's out back. Yeah. Robert, are, are there two buildings being erected, or there is one that would be involved with this? Okay. We do have already with. Well, it's not really for public knowledge at this point. We've gotten a couple of grants to actually try to capture the heat off from the composting and reprocess that and either use that to uh, heat space or dry product. But uh, those are one and two phase and we've received some grant money for both of those. It'll involve a hoop structure but once again that's going to be back away out where the composting is occurring. This is north of it. This would be in an area that's considered to be clean water versus contaminated water that we have to manage. Is the, is the truck traffic coming in? It's to be assumed it'll be using the... The Omnia Road. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Which is the way the material comes in and yep. leaves now. So. Great. Other than the local pickup for retail. Just to give me a rough, what is the normal si si silo? What would that be, a silage bin, like what you have in the farm operation? What size is that? To give me a comparison of what it look, what big it would be. Over, our silos are 50 by 120. Okay. All right. Or bigger. This is smaller. That's a lot of wood chips then. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. Now, that's just a guess. I wanted right. to size it plenty big enough because they need to be under, they need to be dry. Yes. So they're processed, put in the building. Yeah. And I would anticipate not processing every day by any stretch of the imagination. But there would be wood, round wood coming in, stocked, and then chips going out based right. on the market. Um, you know, be similar to the chips that would be taken Middlebury College, for instance. Yeah. Okay. You don't expect any substantial change to the noise or the additional noise that no. the operation. We already grind on a yes. periodic basis anyway. Usually when the solid waste district brings a grinder in, we use it as well. But. Any other questions from the board at this time? Have yes. Have you begun the 250 process? Yes. Um, I have a question for Jan. What is the um, remaining permitting process for this building? Because the size is only approximate right now. If we approve this today, there are still other, aside from Act 250, there are other mm -hmm. permits that will need to be obtained. Yep. So if the DRB approves the use, then I'll go ahead and work with Bob to, to do a permit for the structure. That can be done administratively. Thank you. Yep. No, it's, it's a conditional use in the ag zone, so. Mm -hmm. Jen, do you have anything to add at this, this point? Okay. Nope. Any questions or comments from the public at this time?
Hearing none. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the application of the Vermont Natural Ag Products for the construction of a 50 by 100 concrete slab with a hood structure, whatever you want to call it. Um, do we want do we want the size of the building in this motion or just um, the, the approval of the we haven't purchased we I haven't put purchased a it so. motion in the staff memo if you're yes. if you're of a mind to read it um, but if you feel like the building should be in it we can modify that yeah. I'm just going by what uh, the bottom of page two. <laughs> That's what they're suggesting. Because like Ann said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to permit the structure separately anyway, yeah, so you don't need to talk about it. Separately. This is for the use. <clears throat> Would you like to redo your motion? Go ahead, John. Well, all right. I move that the Middlebury Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented, at the public hearing of August 8, 2016, approve this conditional use request to add commercial forestry operations and biomass processing as a use at 297 Lower Foot Street. Is there a second to the motion? Second. It's been seconded. Is there further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm glad you took me first because I've got an 11-year-old that's waiting for a birthday party. So. <laughs> so, Kevin? Hey, Kevin? Yes. You might have to, uh, you might have to redo that motion. So you have eight people sitting here, and you only need seven, but you've got two alternates. Okay. So I think you need to decide which alternate is a voting alternate yeah, we or should. something. Except everyone voted in favor. Uh, right, but only seven people vote. Okay. So all the alternates participate, but only seven people vote. And Anne seconded that motion, so. Okay, so we're going to include Anne's vote, and we won't include Gary's vote. I didn't vote. So I'll just. I'll just <laughs> Gary didn't vote. <laughs> so I'll just say approve seven zero here. then. Okay. <coughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, next item is an application by Barbara Nelson of Middlebury Studio School for a setback waiver to construct an approximately 30 by 35 foot addition within the 125 foot front setback from Route 7. This property is located at 2377 Route 7 South in the A. Arizona district. And I will read the oath for anybody that wants to participate. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Yes. Would you like to? Yes, I'm Lynn Rice, president of the board uh, governing uh, Middlebury Studio School. With me today is Barbara Nelson, our business manager, also a member of the board, and also uh, Jared Motes, who is a principal of the uh, SEC Corporation, uh, who has been doing the uh, preliminary design for us. Okay. Just one. Before you go any further, John. Yeah, I just want to announce that I'm going to recuse myself because yep. I work for SEC. Okay. Thank you, John. Yep. Okay. Um, Gary, you hold it. If anyone else is going to speak, they should put someone too. Yeah, you're going to watch it. I may? Okay. I just did. Only one person. Well, the, and everybody had the opportunity to take the oath. I don't do it individually. I do it on the case, on the. So um, only the one gentleman is going to address the issue tonight, or is Barbara and the SEC gentleman also going to speak? 
depending on the question any here the other two may speak yes okay if they affirm the oath then they can speak anybody that affirms the oath I affirm the oath I affirm the oath okay is there anybody else that okay Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we have been using the building at that address for about a year now, renting it uh, to conduct our art and craft classes. Uh, it's served our purpose as well. Uh, we're considering buying the building. <coughs> uh, one issue is we have room in the building for a space to do uh, pottery on wheels and hand build pottery. But we don't have a space uh, for fine arts, uh, painting, and, and that kind of work, or some of the classes for children. So we want to add one room to uh, the building we're in. If we can get permission to do that, we have money, we will buy the building, and then raise funding to add a room to it. Uh, it will be a single story room. Uh, and I believe you have a fair number of illustrations that uh, were submitted. Okay. Um, so the, the addition will be on the north north end of the existing building. Yes. Um, right now that starts to infringe on the existing parking and entrance way. Um, will you be changing the entrance at all? Uh, we don't anticipate changing the entrance. Uh, actually, there's parking across the back that has not been used. In the photograph you have, there are two quite large trees there that hide the parking. Mm -hmm. But we find that uh, those trees have, in recent times, been taken down. And there's enough room in there for an additional nine cars. Okay. Now, from the corner, the corner of the existing, of the new proposed building, mm -hmm. to the edge where the cars will come in and out, the distance at that critical corner, um, is, yeah. is that room for two-way traffic there? I believe it is, though certainly we can, where the grass is, we can round or widen just through that corner as necessary. I believe 20 feet is what we need, right, for two-way? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the spec is. But. 22. How much? 22. 22. Yeah. I'm positive that if, if when we get done we don't have it, we'll make it happen. Okay. Do you, uh, the, right, the state right away on this, uh, at what point, do you know where that is? Is that the yellow line? Jared? Jared? The yellow line. Is the state? This. Is this? That's a uh, state right away. Uh, I assume so. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. It says it's the buried natural gas line. No, no, this yellow line. Oh, this here. line up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, it probably is. Parcel line. Is that just a parcel line? Parcel line. I think that's the. I I believe mm -hmm. that's just the par property boundary. Yeah. Okay, so that would be the state right away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Other questions? So, Jan, uh -huh. is this building currently in in compliance with zoning now, or is this it is not? So, we are technically just adding an addition to a building that's not in compliance. Um. Yep. I know what you're getting at. Okay. So, so then the question is, does that increase the degree of nonconformity? There you go. Or would you be increasing the degree of nonconformity only if you were growing closer to the road? I'm going to let you answer that. That's what you guys are for. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, in, in getting, asking SEC to do this design, we wanted to be sure that we didn't encroach any closer on setbacks than the 
the existing building. You know, so we're n no closer to the back line and certainly no closer to the road than the uh, current building. And, and I agree with that, but you're not in compliance. Okay. You're not in compliance. I, I realize. Yeah. So how how yeah. old is that building? Oh, it's it, it, yeah, it's very old. Pre, Which is pre, it's pre zoned. Pre zoned. Yes. Right. Okay. So you, when we came we to want the zoning the... meeting, I had the history of every possible thing it had been used for. It has never been used. Well, the only thing agricultural was when it was a Pleasant Hill farm market. Everything else has not been agricultural. Even it used though to be it's a so restaurant. Good. It was a restaurant. It was a store. It was um, uh, fireplace stuff. It was used clothes. Or used clo it was everything. It's been everything. It was an inn. So, um, Jen, wouldn't it be the build the existing building be grandfathered by the zoning regulations? Yep, the existing building is fine. Right. However, there is there is a clause in the regulations that says that you can't increase the degree of a nonconformity right. for a nonconforming structure. Right. So then it's really the regulations don't go on to explain what that means. So it's yeah. a judgment call the board needs to make on if making it longer increases the degree or if only making it closer would increase the degree. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I, have a, I have a question about uh, an opinion about that, but I have a question about Section 540, which is the setback review. Um, it's not in the packet, I don't think, is it? The criteria of the setback? I, I didn't have the hearing card with me. And could you give us a summary of what the criteria is for the setback waiver? Could you? Or anybody who has a binder? Uh, and the specific question I want to ask is, is, is there a test or could the project be executed without the setback waiver? That's often the criteria. Mm. The applicant was good enough to include this in the packet. Really? So, yeah, it's on the last page. So you saved me, Barbara. <laughs> Which thing are you talking about? Um, section 724. I think David wants to refamiliarize himself oh. with the language of Section 724 that oh, talks it's about. referred to in, as, as, as Section 540. So that's just the standards for condition review. I see. Is it the very last page of the? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, no, I read that. Oh, I thought okay. it was referring to the whole other section of 540, but that's conditional <coughs> review. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. You wanted to know what 540 said. That's the conditional use section. Yep. So uh, since, since it seems like you passed that test, um, can I ask, is there a reason that you go, that you go north off the building as opposed to going off east? You get close to the neighbor's property if you go that way. Yeah. It seems much more interesting. Which was the one direction we could go without putting our footprint, you know, closer to our boundaries. Right. And it, it would be functionally workable for us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Yeah, I, I, I'm still not. I know the answer Jed just gave me. I guess I'm trying to figure out how we can make this work so well, that when we're done, the whole building's in compliance. No, well, it's, it's... I don't think you can just add an addition and make the non-conforming use greater. And that's You're, what we're doing. No, we work. We are. The non-conforming use building is the existing building. We are making that for us. But we're looking for a setback. The, on this part here right. only, not on this part. We don't need a setback waiver on the existing building, only on the addition. And we are extending the set, we are extending that. Um, I'm not against the project. I just well, want to make sure I'm we do this right so that okay. it, it's all one parcel when we get done. Well, it will be. I don't know if it matters um, to this discussion or not, but there is another um, site feature that's creating a, a problem. So there's an underground, isn't there an underground, there's an underground water line, right, or a sewer line? Uh, that, it turns out, is there's a blue line on the map there. Uh, it, 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 I know you, I, I believe you were of the opinion that was behind the building, yeah. but the gentleman from the water department was there anyway, and he traced it. It runs along Route 7, and then mm -hmm. the south corner of our lot okay. goes back in. Okay. Thank you for refreshing yeah. memory. So that was, is, that's not a concern. He was just there a month ago for Vermont Gas because they put the pipeline through the front. So he had to show them where the water line was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's in the front.
Okay. Don, there's only two um, regarding the setback waiver. There's only two uh, um, items that we can't do. It can't be less than five feet, and it can't be uh, more than uh, 50,000 square feet for a retail store. So that's the, that's the only two limits on, on giving a setback. And this passes both? Yes, it does. The plan passes both. Yes. Any other comments, questions at this time for the board? Are, are we satisfied that they've demonstrated that there's the existing parking that they're now going to put a building on is being replaced with enough adequate parking? And how many more spaces does it need when we add this addition? I did a parking study. Would you like me to do that? Well, I, I, I guess I need the answer from the... From I just need to re-familiarize myself. It was like a week ago. It was um, so. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to classify the use in a way that works with our parking calculations, right? right. Yeah. But suffice yeah. to say, in the summer there'd be six to nine additional cars dropping off kids, and they have um, they have green space in the back. Right. But they said with the removal of the tree. No, the tree the has been removed. They've been, they're, they're gone. Already. They're gone. Not in the picture, Don. They're oh. in the picture. The picture oh. is an older picture. Yeah, they oh. were removed but back Those trees are now gone. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's these two right here. Yeah. Yes. These are now gone. Those two right here. Yeah. So we have all this area. Would you like to provide yeah. uh, information on the parking? So, this is what we do. We have art classes, and then the next page shows what, what the traffic and parking is now, and then what I expect the traffic and parking will be. Right now we have summer art camps for kids and we rent a space at the Hennifer Career Center. And so what I expect the difference would be is that those kids could now be in this room and be at this space. And so that runs from 9 to 11.30. So what I expect is the parents would come, drop off their kids, they'd do the camp and then they'd pick them up and then they would go. So that's why I say there would be, I don't know, six to nine cars dropping off kids at nine and then picking them up at 11.30. That would be the main difference. Okay, and how, how many uh, employees? There would be one adult, one more adult okay. with those kids so than what, what we have what's now. what's the total employee at any one time? At any one time. Number of spaces you need for employees, in other words. Currently, probably the most we ever have is three. Three. And so added to the three, the most that you would need? Might be a fourth employee. Yeah, but, okay, but you, the three plus the people that are coming and going, mm -hmm. which they need short-term parking. I yes. Assume. And how, what's the max number there? Nine? So, no, so we figure we would have four parking spaces along the front that we currently have. And Lynn and I were measuring the back where those trees are down. And we could go across the back and get another 13 spaces in the back. So that would be 17. Okay. If we needed to, we could turn some of that. We have a big lawn back there. Remember the mic. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. You heard me, right? All right. And Barbara, yes. um, aside from the children's classes, you have a maximum number of students in your adult classes during the day, right? Eight is usually the most we ever have. Like Tuesday mornings, we usually have eight students, eight adults. So they come and park, and there's an instructor there. So pretty much every Tuesday morning, we have nine people parked there. 
So that's not coming close to what's available. No. Um, that's right. <coughs> okay, any other comments? Information from the public? Okay. I have a question. Uh, I don't know if it's Jimmy. There's a garage there. Is that going to be part of your property? Yeah, the, the garage has our kiln in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to change that. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Is that the building to the north? Of yes. 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 The northmost building. Thank you. Uh, no, in fact, I didn't even analyze this at the level of specificity that you are, because to me, this is using the conditional use process to analyze a setback waiver. So it's all about the setback from the road. It's not really about the use, and I mean, to me, but, and, and I really think the central, I think the central question becomes, you know, do you think that just setting it back a little and elongating it further increases the extent of this nonconformity or not? And I have an opinion on that, but I'm going to hold my time. I mean, unless you want my opinion. But. I, I was just looking at the proposed motion. Mm. I'm okay with where we're at, but I don't like approving another conditional use. I just, I'm, I'm bothered by keep approving conditional uses. Why? I, I'm just, I don't know. I guess That's, I'm... That's that's what we do. I know. I don't yeah. like it. Why can't we just give it a permit and call it what it is? That's, well, you know? that's, that's the conditional use is the process. Yeah, I know. Well, we get a conditional use. To um, are there any other are comments? We, are we still waiting for any papers? Or yeah, you? there's no more yes. comments from the public. So we're back to the board for. More questions or a motion? I feeling that this does not, in fact, increase the um, noncompliance because it's parallel to the road. I think it's reasonable to grow to the north out of this building. And I think for, <clears throat> I think I think there's a reason with the building too. I think it's they're coming out of the gable so they can go the second story too, uh, in a reasonable way. So I move that we approve the uh, conditional. We approved the setback. Yeah, hey. Thanks. Uh, having reviewed the application submitted and heard the um, testimony presented at the public hearing of August 8th, I approve this conditional. I, I move that we approve the conditional use request for expansion of. This is the wrong. <laughs> it's the wrong one. It's the wrong project. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I move that we approve the conditional use request for a front setback waiver. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like your pictures back? You can keep them. We're just going to recycle them. Sure, we're just going to recycle them anyway. Put them on the wall. Hey, Barbara. Thank you for coming. Here's some more. You got more? Yeah. Okay. Here. Did you have a good rest? I did. Can. Turn the humidifier off. Remind me to turn it back on. Couldn't hear back then. Part of the AV team now. Next item on the agenda is an application by Middlebury Natural Food Cooperative Incorporated for conditional use approval for proposed changes to their existing building, including an addition, associated modifications to parking, 
access and landscaping. This property lo is located at 1 through 9 Washington Street in the VR zoning VRC zoning district. Um, I will administer the oath and make it simple. Anybody wishing to add information or comments or questions well, after I uh, give the oath, just raise your hand. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Thank you. Okay. Would you like, like to... Uh, because I missed the first hearing, I will recuse myself and go to the back of the room. Go to the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Face the corner. <laughs> okay, would you like to uh, update us on the new information that you provided? Sure. Uh, my name is Andrea Murray. Uh, I'm here from Vermont Integrated Architecture, architecture firm uh, working with the co-op on its expansion. Um, we have here also Eric Neal from Middlebury Natural Foods Co-op, uh, Jeff Glassberg, owner's representative, and um, Brent Rakowski from Otter Creek Engineering. Uh, we were here on July 25th and are back to follow up with um, three items, uh, landscape plan, site lighting, and um, a report having met with both the fire and police chiefs about site circulation. Um, in terms of the landscape plan, you should have a copy of that in your packet. And I have one here also um, printed large. I don't know. I just saturate, sorry. Um, so uh, this is what we would love to do and are hoping to do should the numbers work out for us in terms of cost. Um, we are doing our best to make whatever little greens, little spaces, <coughs> leftover spaces we have as green as possible. And um, in particular, we are looking at um, three main views of the co-op now. Um, one is, uh, this is Washington Street here along the south. And as you approach in this direction, you will now have a little glimpse of the edge of the co-op here. So we're hoping to put a little something green there. Um, here will be a secondary entrance toward the co-op. It will be right outside the new cafe area. And our um, plan is to create a plaza there for um, outdoor seating. Um, with some additional greenery. Um, there is one existing tree there, a very nice uh, deciduous tree that would stay, and then we're proposing some additional plantings. Um, the plantings uh, along this area, some of those existing plantings will remain, but we'd like to do some natural stormwater filtration of the water that's coming off of one Washington Street, the roof. It, it sheds in this direction. Um, however, uh, there will still be active stormwater drainage as well, and that will tie into a, a structure on Washington Street. Um, and then the third area is the existing uh, plaza or patio area at the main entrance of, of the co-op. Um, the only new green space here really um, is this area where we have removed parking um, relocated it uh, to make the driveway more consistent and wider and there would be a small green area here as well. Um, plantings along the east wall would need to be, uh, the existing plantings will likely need to be removed and replaced for a variety of reasons. Our hope is that any new plantings we put in would be indigenous and um, of local varieties. Um, hopefully heavy with uh, plants that will attract pollinators. And um, yeah, there really isn't a lot of, of planting um, on the project. We do not have a formal planting list yet, um, but we can certainly provide that as we get to that, to that point or take your suggestions. Um, in terms of site lighting, uh, any questions on landscaping or should I just keep going? Yeah. Um, the, if you make a depression for 
a rain garden. Yep. Is there any? Is there a basement in one Washington Street? I mean, would there be any risk of infiltration into that basement, given that the depression would be collecting some of that rainwater? Yep, it's a good question. On this section of one Washington Street, there is not a basement. There's a small um, basement over on this side. Um, in fact, uh, Eric may know there's a crawl space over there, but I don't believe so. No, I don't think so. No. Okay. And you talked about possibly widening the entrance uh, next to um, the right, rural rights mm -hmm. uh, bakery there. Is that part of the plan here, or you're not able to do that? Yeah, so we can't move in this direction. Obviously, yes. Um, we are widening along this area. Okay. It varies between 18 inches and 24 inches. Okay. We're really constricted by this light pole. That's right here on the corner. It has three-phase power to it and a bunch of um, transformers on it. And it's our, it's our limiter, unfortunately. And um, we'd love to widen it more. Uh, but you know, as much as we can get, I think, makes it safer. And um, not having parking here backing into the main drive aisle, I think, also helps um, make it more safe. Can you not move the pole? Um, well, it would be very expensive to do so. I know in the first expansion uh, or project in 2004, they looked at that mm -hmm. as an option. Um, and it was very expensive because it is three-phase power and it has three transformers on it. We have called um, Green Mountain Power to see if they have any plans to do any work. Mm -hmm. um, along Washington Street to see if by any chance we're in the queue and we could work with them to do something. Mm -hmm. They do not have any plans and in fact they said it looks like someone hit the conduit down at the base. Could you please replace that? So um, <laughs> right now, no, but they know it's on our radar. So should they ever do any work in there, we'd like to work with them to do something there. Um, but it's a, it's a, a fairly important power pull. Um, on this stretch of oh, service. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's the main feed also into the building, and mm -hmm. it, I believe, also feeds Rubrites mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it's a tricky one. Um, yeah. How much would it cost to replace it? I don't know the answer to that um, right off the top of my head. Do you have any? Everybody just screams when we mention it. So. Pardon me? <laughs> everyone everyone goes, oh, no, <laughs> when we mention it. I mean, I think it's worth asking the question, but I'm not sure it would be it's something we could commit to as part of this well, project. Well, what's the cost of the expansion? The cost of the expansion? Your, um, your project. The project, project has a $2 million construction budget. OK. Well, I, I'd like to know what it would cost to replace the pole. If it's $20,000 or 50000 that's in a $2 million project, that's not a huge amount. Yeah, we can, we can, we can ask the question. Sure. OK, you were started to talk about the lighting. Yeah. So, just that over. Thank you. Um, so you should also have a photometric plan in your package. Um, the photometric plan, I realized, shows um, proposed new lighting and the photometrics associated. Um, there is some existing lighting on site that I've highlighted um, in yellow. I'm not sure uh, you can see that. I'm happy to bring it closer. Um, can you, can but you there's just point to the existing? Yeah, just point it Yeah. Back. So right here, there's one light pole in the parking lot right now. That's the only one that services, and it has a single head on it, um, full cutoff downlight. Um, so it services about this much area of the parking lot. Um, there are lights underneath the main entry canopy here um, that uh, are their recessed can lights, and they are primarily down, but a little of that light extends out beyond. Um, and then there is a uh, sort of decorative, not very tall light pole here in the um, entry plaza. 
Uh, we will have um, light underneath the canopy to the entrance here and light underneath the back canopy here, but that's not technically site lighting, although some of that will spill a little bit onto the site. Um, we're proposing adding two lights here um, to the back with two heads each. Uh, this one may want to slide a little bit to the north. Um, per your suggestion, we placed one here as far back as possible because uh, co-op staff park on the leased property back here, and so we wanted to provide a little more uh, light there as well. Um, there will be some additional light on the building in these areas and um, some bollard lights uh, along the main pedestrian ways. Uh, it is our hope and we're looking at using solar lights, solar power lights back here. The ones in your packet are um, adaptable. Uh, they're pretty expensive so we want to um, get your approval for the non-solar lights if possible, but you know we're hoping that we can actually uh, go for the solar lights. And um, you know, it's, it's bare minimum lighting um, other than kind of the, the light pole proposed here. I don't believe we're really spilling with any of this new light onto any of the neighboring properties. And our, um, the plan would be for this li these lights not to be on, um, especially these and kind of anything on a pole, not to be on more than an hour or so after the co-op closes. So it wouldn't be an all night kind of thing. It's mostly for um, kind of the safety and accessibility of uh, customers and staff. <clears throat> um, and there are some uh, preliminary cut sheets of the type of lighting um, we're looking at in your in your packet, I believe. Any questions on the photometrics? Questions on the lighting at this time? Um, and I guess the oh go ahead. Is there any lighting that'll stay on for security purposes? Maybe the wall of the packs and what do you do now currently? Right now everything is under the timer and a photo cell and it's, it's all off by time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. F photo cell following the sun or yes. so not a photo sensor? Are the, do you have any sensor driven lighting? Well, Security I, lighting? so these are, the, the exterior lighting is on a sensor so that when the darkness reaches a certain point yeah. It, it'll click off, but it also has to be beyond our time. I, I'm, I wasn't speaking clearly. I meant the motion sensor. Do you have oh, motion, motion sensor, sensor. security? Um, nothing we have now is motion sensor. Yeah, I don't think we have any motion sensor lighting right now. Um, uh, we also did meet with both um, Chief. Uh, Hanley and the fire chief on the site together. Um, we walked around and reviewed all possible issues. Um, and Jen, they were going to check in with you. Um, I don't know if you've yes. heard from them. Yes, they're, um, the emails are in each their packets. Okay. Sorry. I didn't see those I emails. Um, the summary, I hope it's what's in your packet that I got was. Uh, Chief Hanley didn't have any concerns about pedestrian or vehicular uh, traffic, and um, Fire Chief was a uh, little bit concerned about the, the main entry out onto Washington Street um, and also the uh, possibility of two trucks being parked at the back um, for unloading. Um, but basically said he wasn't, was going to recommend we go ahead with the project regardless because it's not, we're actually making better the circulation yes. and not, um, you know, if, if that pole eventually, whatever, <laughs> can be moved or if we can um, realign with the Shaw's entrance or if the neighbors to the north are ever willing to um, provide access. Uh, from Seminary Street, then that would be great. But realizing that we can't control a lot of those things. 
Um, Kevin? Sure. Um, have you have you made any progress in discussions with the property to the north about the gate? Um, so um, this is a site plan from last time. Uh, so you're referring to possibly there being a gate here or even further to the north. What, the gate that the um, fire chief was hoping might be available. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's up here. Um, you know, it's, we really don't have a lot of control or the co-op doesn't have a lot of control over. I understand that, but have mm -hmm. there been any negotiations about it? There has been a conversation, but, um, you know, I'm reluctant to say uh, that it has gone very far. Um, is it likely that further progress can be made or is, do you get the impression that um, the conversation is over for the time being? I, I get the impression that it's over for the time being and possibly revisited should this site ever be developed further. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to avoid your question. <laughs> Any other questions at this time from the board? I have one question, which is, do you have any metrics on what what you're getting for the, the green stormwater initiative that you're doing? I mean, are you taking a percentage of the flow off the roof? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about um, Well, as Andrea, I'm Brent Rakowski. I'm with Otter Creek Engineering. Um, as Andrea mentioned, uh, we're taking the uh, vast majority of the rooftop from 1 Washington Street. Uh, and incorporating that into a rain garden. So, so percentage-wise, um, I can't. I can't give you an actual percentage of what the, the oh, treatment I, I didn't, requirements I didn't hear are. The majority. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the so vast majority. Are, are you looking for specific percentages of? No, I wasn't. Water? I didn't hear the word vast majority. That's okay. that gives me a sense of scale. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions at this time from the board? I'll open it up to the public. Are there any comments or questions or concerns? It's uh, quite a, a large uh, project. Could you state your name for the record, please? We need, we need him to have the microphone. No. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Yeah. I'm Jim Rubright uh, to, the, to the side there. Um, so anyway, where's the additional parking going to be going for this? So, um, the Truck traffic. I understand that possibly it's going to be going one way, just the the large tractor trailers coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So, um, truck traffic will uh, trucks will come in here on the west side of the building. Um, they will park here at the north, and um, there may be two trucks parked um, occasionally here. Um, they will unload into the loading area at the co-op and then proceed around and then back out okay. here, like they do now. Yeah, but automobiles can go both ways mm. at any time. No, um, I mean, so it's always hard to control mm -hmm. how cars will go. Ideally, what will happen is um, folks who come in and park in these spaces will be able to leave to in exit. that direction if they need to. Okay. Um, but 
the co-op um, would like to discourage people parking here from sneaking around this way because it's not the best to come in contact or face to face with a big truck. Mm -hmm. So the hope is that um, customers parking here will come in and out this main entry, which is part of the reason for designating a driveway here so that there is a place for folks to you know, two or three cars to stack up and then go out onto Washington Street and not deal with cars barking, backing directly into that okay. um, lane. You. And all these spots here and your, your spots would mm -hmm. remain as is. Yeah. I always say that parking is what it is because, you know, there's so much going on everywhere. Yeah. And it's not like a customer comes into my store, comes out, and then I see, and I say, great, you parked in my parking space, and now I saw you go to the co-op, you please get in your car and go park in the co-op. You know, that's not going to happen. I would never think of doing that. But it gets to a point sometimes that you think that this is ours and this is yours, you know. So yeah. I just want to relate that I just believe parking is what it is, and somehow we get it done. Uh, when I did my small addition, I put into a fund, and I don't know if they still have a fund for parking. Do they have a fund when you do an addition? For off-site parking? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I don't know where that fund goes to. I don't know if you buy buildings and tear them down and put up parking spaces or what. But <laughs> anyway, so when you have a project this size, you just would assume that you're going to have way increase in business. That's why you're doing it. Therefore, you need quite a bit more parking to substantiate the investment. And, you know, one parking space doesn't seem like very much, but... I think the um, intent is, yes, there will be an increase in business. Um, it should not be proportional to the increase in traffic, however. Um, the co-op is hoping to offer more products, and so perhaps folks coming will actually purchase more. Mm -hmm. um, and yep, there will probably be an increase in um, people coming or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's the hope. But I don't think it will be directly proportional to the increase in space. Okay, great. Thank you. How many of those parking places on the left belong to Detman and Foley? Yeah, I can read you the... There are six that are um, part of Deppman and Foley. There are six. Six, yeah. So uh, let me just give you the full summary here again. So I. They have 10 employees and six parking So they have 10 employees and six parking places. I can't speak for Deppman and Foley. All I know is that's how many spots are allocated on the co ops. Um, property for Dutman and Foley. That was something you negotiated on the first construction, right? Yes, that was negotiated as part of the PUD for the first pro um, project in 2004. Any other questions from the public? Yes. Very exciting. Um, state your name for the record, please. Everyone needs to state their name for the record. My name is Leslie Kameny. Um, I'm just wondering, are you paving the um, parking lot? Mm -hmm. So um, all the areas on the um, all the areas on the um, co-op lot that are being disturbed will be paved. Um, this area will remain, it's currently paved, will <coughs> remain paved. Um, but these areas that we are disturbing as part of the construction or reconfiguration will be repaved, yes. So I would just like to express um, a concern that um, we have across the street are large paved surfaces also. Mm -hmm. So what could be happening by the lack of planting of trees is uh, creating a heat island, which mm -hmm. will raise temperature and um, increase air pollution, things like that. Yeah. So I just, that was my only comment. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, we're not increasing the um, 
amount of impervious surface that's already on the site. So the paved areas, the roofs, they're, they're already there. I mean, I, it's, it's somewhat gratuitous, but any new paving that we would do in these areas, um, would, we're, we're planning to use pervious pavement there of a light color. Um, the roof on the new addition will be a, a TPO roof, um, a membrane roof, and it will be of a light color to help reduce heat island effect. Um, the, the paving's a trickier one, um, so I can't really speak to what we could do in this paved area right now to make that better. Do you have an idea how long the project will take mm -hmm. to complete? Yeah, so our goal is to, um, we're in design right now, and our goal is to begin construction in March and have it complete in October, um, by the end of October, in time for the holiday season, which is a very busy time at the mm -hmm. co-op, probably for you folks as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be pretty fast track. Um, Any other questions at this time? I don't have questions. I just have a couple of comments. Sure. My name is Lindsay Rubright. Um, when we initially, my brother and I initially met with Glenn to speak about renovations and the possibilities, <laughs> we had some specific questions about what was being put into the new space. And from what <laughs> I've heard spoken about, like the possibility of expansion of their cafe and all that stuff, he definitely didn't answer the questions to what we're hearing tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I do have to say though, with moving those two parking spaces, definitely will be helpful though, because I know there's a lot of trouble in that area where we've had customers that have backed into our spaces and you know broken right. stuff. So I think that's a good thing that's being done, but. I'm sure um, Glenn's on vacation. I know he wanted to be yeah. here, but I'm sure he'd be happy to, or I'd be happy to share with you the interior layout as, as it gets developed. Um, we're, in, we're in it right now. So yeah. if you'd like to come and yeah. see how it's laying out, what the cafe looks like, I'd be happy to share that with you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other comments? Um, Andrea, you may have answered this at the first hearing. Regarding the um, parking for the employees, mm -hmm. um, is that agreement with the neighbor? Is that just a, a verbal agreement, or is there some sort of... Uh... I'll, I'll let Jeff speak to that. Uh, there's a written agreement, okay. uh, but it's for a limited term. Sure. Okay, but do you know what the term is? Uh, it's for two years. Roll one. And that just roll Correct. Every two years it rolls over, hopefully. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from the board at this time? Yeah, I, I think that prompts the obvious question. <clears throat> if that agreement is terminated and an accommodation is not made, is it time to look for a backup plan then, or is there a backup plan for parking? Um, we did our parking analysis um, that we looked at last time right. and um, the parking per zoning and then the parking per ITE guidelines. Yep. Um, and so I can just run through it quickly with you if you would like me to again. Sure. Um, so right now there are, um, we are proposing on site a total of 83 spaces. 23 of those spaces are controlled by the rights of others. There are six for Debman and Foley, five for LaBerge Insurance, um, six for the Optic Sweet Marie's property in 1 Washington Street, and six for the Rubrites Bakery. So that's a total of 23. Um, so that leaves a net of 60 spaces on the site for um, the co-op. Currently, just so you know, um, there are 30 spaces on the, s the property to the north on that leased piece of property, and there are eight spaces along mm -hmm. the street on Washington Street um, that are used 
by the co-op and, and by you folks and, and others. Um, the, based on the square footages of, of the property, um, it basically tells us that if we look at the, the zoning requirements um, for both office and for commercial and back of house, we're, we're looking at 62, um, let's see, one Washington Street. Uh, so we're looking at 10 spots on the second floor and five spots on the first floor. So a total of 15 to accommodate the co-op's office space in one Washington Street. This is not the, new, the store building, but the one on Washington Street. So that's a total of 15. And then per the expansion um, for the, the retail or commercial space, um, required one space at 150 square feet per um, 62 spaces required and five um, for back of house or storage. Um, so that's a total of 82 spaces being required. Again, the total available is 60. Um, the net under or over requirement is 22 plus the additional available to the north. I know that can't technically be counted per zoning, but it is part of the um, the reality of the project. Per ITE guidelines, um, basically the net uh, under is 12, so it, there are fewer spaces in that regard that would be required. Um, I mean, I just mentioned again, the co-op's very committed. They made a decision to stay in this downtown. Um, I know there are many people who park across the street at Shaw's and they shop at both places. There's more um, street parking, people walk. Uh, so, I mean, the co-op's advisors have said repeatedly you should move, you know, out of town and have a big parking lot, but they are very much committed to the downtown and staying in the downtown. Um, and so parking is always going to be something that a downtown business is going to be faced with. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, right across the street from the co-op also is the Vermont Federal Bank, which is closed on weekends, and I know for a fact that that parking lot gets utilized by people that don't right now necessarily want to traverse the narrow drive in and out from the co-op parking lot. Um, and also, um, like with the Rube rights, people that might who go to the bank also sometimes run across the street, leave their car, car, car parked at the bank. And so, as, as Jim was saying, you know, the parking's there, it, it all kind of works out. But also thinking in the future here, as we have goals to reduce fossil fuel use and uh, increase mass transit, public transportation, I think our, our focus on parking may start to shift and we may need to rethink the, the number of spots that we give to, you know, the reality is we're going to need to be reducing the number of spots because we need to be driving less, generally speaking. So I just want to share that. Watson Scott and I currently release the spaces out back to the co-op plus part of the building that I sublet from the uh, career company. There's more like 40 spaces out back versus 30 as expressed here. And uh, they have no long-term uh, plans for the facility. I just recently re-signed the lease, so that's all I got to say. Thanks. Um, Jen, is there a provision to charge for if the parking is not adequate to charge per space or I know there are in some areas of the town um, yep um, people can uh, request off-site parking waivers and then they pay a fee per space for um, for parking on the street or parking in a another public facility um, so in this case I don't really know how much on-street parking is available, so I don't, I don't know how applicable that is. It's not applicable? Um, yeah, I had... I, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, when one of these agreements caves in, say in two years, <coughs> um, it's going to take quite a bit of parking. 
I don't know if we need to charge now, but you know, as a contingent, um, if that happened, mm -hmm. if the agreement caved in, uh, maybe we could renegotiate that. Or That's a good point. What, what, what is the uh, um, cost for that per space? I think it was. We just did this. I think it was one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, that's what brings it Less than two hundred dollars. Thanks. Okay, so if we if we required a parking waiver, we would have to decide on um, in the future. Gary was talking about the future. Is that what you're, you're talking about? Yeah, I mean they've got they've got apparently enough okay. with their leases and everything, but. <clears throat> Uh, okay. They're short term. Right. But do we need to, if it becomes evident, do we need to uh, give them some sort of an idea now on uh, how many they would need? How many we would require, that, how many waivers we would require them to have? Or d does that wait? It's up to them? us. Yeah. I would say it's up to us. Yeah. Well, I didn't know whether we or should give them an idea on what could happen, how many they would need to have. Or is that hard to figure out now? Um, yeah, I think that's hard to figure out now because there's two different calculation methods okay. that produce different results. Mm -hmm. um, and neither of those calculation methods produce a parking deficit in excess of what is offered off-site through this two-year mm -hmm. lease agreement. Okay. But were we to have to cross that bridge down the line, we would recalculate the parking and, and then they could request a waiver of some sort. What would trigger that, though? In the in the staff report, the idea was that um, approval of the second story would might be contingent upon renewal of that agreement. Or, but but I, I can't think of anything. I mean, so approval is granted for the project. It's built. It's humming along great. They lose the lease to the Carrera parking. There's no there's no actionable moment. There's nothing that brings it to attention except for potentially a a complaint. I guess a complaint to zone. Get a notification that the lease is up. I think before it got to zoning complaint level, you would just find overflow parking happening in other places. I see. Like Ross pointed out, like at the bank or at Shaw's, and and then the big, the big issue would be how do we pay for a safe crosswalk? Not how do we <laughs> figure out how to get them back in for a waiver? Um, are we in the so discussion now, or are we just asking questions? We're still asking questions. So parking calculations are, are most useful when you've got new construction in a suburban area and you've got plenty of space to decide how many you're going to paint and pave. In the downtown area, it requires, a, a, you know, creativity, really, and shared parking agreements between neighbors. I wanted to mention, could I mention something? Sure, yes, go ahead. Um, with regard to, to Gary's um, question about the utility pole, I just wanted to point out that there is a, um, there is a program, it's a, it's a tax incentive program that we could apply for um, as the town jointly with the co-op next July. And that uh, program is set up to take the um, sales tax generated from any construction materials on this project route them to the town to have the town respend it on a, an infrastructure project that, that provides a benefit to the co-op. So um, if, the, if the amount came out right, that pole is a potential project, or a crosswalk over to Shaw's could be a potential project. Or, um, I just wanted to throw that out there and see, see if, if there's still a willingness to partner with the town on something like that to enhance this project even over and above the conditions of this decision in the future. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. I have a Any question other? for you about the light. You, you mentioned okay. early on about solar lighting. Mm -hmm. Is that something you want to pursue? Yes, and we are pursuing it. I just couldn't commit to it this evening because we're in the process of getting pricing for that. It will be a very sure similar um, fixture and it would have a little solar panel and a battery pack on the top. Um, and it would allow us not to have to trench out into the parking lot more to get power 
um, to those locations. And so and my hope is that the um, <coughs> offset there of the actual construction for the trenching will pay for the additional cost of the power pole, uh, of the battery pack and the, and the panel. Would, would you set those on a timer also to shut off at 10? Yes, yes. It would be the same technology. It's just okay. that the, the solar panels will be collecting energy in a battery during the day okay. so that it can power the light. Anything else from the board? Okay, we have a choice of a motion or a deliberative session. What were the options? A motion, a motion. or a deliberative? Yeah. So deliberative session would mean that you would um that you would close the hearing, but you would go into a closed session to deliberate the. Yes. Okay. Or, or a motion. Or we can recess it. Right. Or we can recess. Or we can it continue it. it. Until we get the answers to these other questions, I'm particularly interested in how much it would cost to move that pole. If, I would suggest that that's not a, a an issue that should hold up uh, the use as an issue before the board, though. Whether they can move the pole could take quite a while and have nothing to do with the merits of moving the pole or the rest of the project. They could not control it. Well, actually, it's not just a use that you're that you're. It's it's a, an amendment to a PUD that you're considering tonight, so that does involve all the the site work and circulation and traffic and oh. all of that. So we can come back to the poll business. You can always continue anything you want. I just wanted to to sort of uh, re encapsulate what we're looking at tonight, which is like sure. the, the amendment to the whole PUD. So, yeah. Okay. Motion. Either approval or not approval or deliberative session. Mm -hmm. Approval, non approval, deliberative session, or continuation. Or continuing, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm going to move uh, that the Middlebury Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at this meeting of August 8th approve this conditional use request for expansion of the Middlebury Natural Foods Cooperative Building located at 9 Washington Street. There's been a motion. Is there a second to the motion? No. I'll second that motion. Been moved and seconded. Discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. So now that you've approved it, do you still want to have deliberative session to help me refine the conditions? We can do that. That would work for me. Okay. Well, do you need a motion to do, do, you need a motion to do that? Um, does yes. someone want to mo move to go to deliberative session? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Yes, moved and second. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So as soon as the room clears, we will go into the limited session. Next item is business is other business. Is there other business? I would just like to welcome Victor to the staff. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. I'm glad to be working with you. And hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> um, it's entertaining. <laughs> there you go. Did you say Disney World? <laughs> um, anything other? Any other business? What's uh, on the agenda for next? Well, right. So next meeting, there's nothing on the agenda. This second meeting in August, you don't okay. have anything. The yeah. deadline has expired. Oh. So September, uh, September 8th, 
Scissors of Golf might be your next one, but I don't have any business for that yet either. I was going to try to remember to ask the Planning Commission if they wanted to do a little retreat with you um, at your regular second uh, meeting night here in August. I haven't remembered to ask them that, though. Is that still of interest? I've been, I've been one of the people who asked for that. Uh -huh. I prefer that it not be. <laughs> now, I'm going to be out of town. Oh, right. It's a, it's a popular end of summer vacation. Yeah, it's a, it is a tough time. It's kind of nice not to have a hearing that day. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned.